Prayer changes things. Prayer changes situations. Prayer changes people in Jesus' name. And we want to go before the Lord now. And we want to ask the Lord to minister by his power. How many of you all believe God hears prayer? Yes, yes. The Lord hears prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. So let us bow our heads now. Gracious God and Father, Lord, we praise you and magnify you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your many wonderful blessings in the midst of our lives. We praise you, O oh God, for your gift to humanity in the person of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for sending him to die on the cross for our sins. You redeemed us and brought us back to you. Thank you for what you've done. Oh God, my Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you move and minister by your mighty power. Lord, remember the requests, the petitions. We ask you, Lord, to bless in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody needs your help. Somebody needs a healing touch. Jesus, 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 we call on your name and we ask you to move by your power. Lord God, my Father, look on your sons and daughters. Today, Lord, give them a word that will encourage their hearts, that will edify them, that will strengthen them, that will feed their soul with the finest of wheat. In the name of Jesus, bind the hand of Satan. Rebuke him in the name, Lord Jesus Christ. Send your anointing, Lord. Let it fall on the east side, the west side, the north side, the south side. Stir up in us, oh God, that free spirit that we can praise you and shout hallelujah, that we can magnify you and glorify you. I ask you now in the name, Lord Jesus Christ, and let those who believe the Lord heard the prayer, let them shout hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. We also thank God for Mother Susanna Chester, who is here this morning. Praise the Lord. Lord has blessed her and strengthened her and allowed her to be in the house of the Lord. Will you turn with me in your Bibles to the Gospel of Mark? The Gospel of Mark, chapter number five. The Gospel of Mark, chapter number five, and verse number 24. And I ask that when you have it, if you'll stand to your feet, if you can, as we reverence the word of the Lord. Mark's gospel, chapter number five and verse number 24. When you have it, will you say amen? amen. And Jesus went with him and much people followed, people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years, had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was not getting better, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, came in a press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Let the church say amen. amen. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. I want to speak to you from the subject this morning that I refuse to accept this condition. I refuse to accept this condition. There is nothing closer in a person's life than their thoughts. Nothing in your life has a greater influence upon you than how you believe and what you believe. Your thoughts give direction and guidance to your actions. Your thoughts can either be instrumental in providing blessings, providing peace, providing success, or either your thoughts can be detrimental 
which can cause hindrances and obstacles in your life. They are your thoughts. You own them. Praise the Lord. They don't belong to anyone else. Your thoughts are your intellectual property. It is what your own mind produces. Things that you imagine in your mind, the things that you ponder and think about every day, they are created by you. Praise the Lord. Now, I have to admit that there are outside forces that are, uh, help you come to conclusions in life. But just because you see it on TV, just because you see it on the Internet, just because you read it in the paper does not mean you have to embrace, praise the Lord, that information that is coming to you. The thoughts that you create, the thoughts that you entertain will either help you in life or either they will hinder you and hinder your advancement and your progress in the kingdom of God. God has given to you the ability to think. And sometimes I wonder if people think. Some people act and then think later. But the best thing to do is to think it out. Think it through. Don't just look at the initial part of it, but work it to the end. See what the end result will be. For the Lord has given us the ability to think. He has given to us logic and rationale, the ability to reason things so that we can come to certain conclusions in life. Sometimes people make choices when they're young and they don't realize how these things will affect them decades later. Praise the Lord. And you can't do that. You, you, God has given you the capacity. God has given you the capability to discern, to imagine, to dream, to pursue. But it's up to you to decide whether or not you're going to entertain the thoughts that you have. What am I going to do with the things and the thoughts that come into my mind? What am I going to do with the images of creativity and success? It's your choice. You know, a thought can come to you and you can consider it. You can reject it. You can embrace it. You can pursue it or you can just let it go. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Where are you today? Where you are today in your personal life? in your spiritual life, in your financial life, is where your thoughts have taken you. The way you think, how you think, and what you think about determines where you're going. Thoughts are a powerful force. Praise the Lord. I'll repeat that. Thoughts are a powerful force. And what I've learned that everybody doesn't think on the same level. Praise God. Some people uh, get an idea and they work on it. They toss it and turn it in their mind. Praise the Lord. They refine it. They work on it until it makes sense to them. Other people, praise the Lord, get a thought and run with it. And then when they stop running, they, they, they realize they've been running in circles because they didn't think it all the way through. Praise the Lord. The way you think can cause you to plummet into depression and despair. And that's true. You sit around and start thinking about how bad this is and how bad that is and 
how bad they treat me and nobody wants to honor me and nobody wants to help me and here I am all by myself. You'll be so depressed, you'll lock your door, put your shades down, get into bed and sleep for a couple of days. All because you created those thoughts and then you followed through with the behavior. So your thoughts can cause you to go into deep depression or your thoughts can lift you out of whatever situation. No matter how stressful it is, your thoughts can lift you out of it. Praise the Lord. That's the ability that you have. Praise the Lord. You're in control of your mind. You think what you want to think. Praise the Lord. You think positively. You think negatively. Nobody controls your thoughts. Nobody hypnotized you. Praise the Lord and said, on the count of three, do what I say. No. Sometimes we hypnotize ourselves. Praise the Lord. It's not the devil. It's your own mind. Praise the Lord. Your thoughts are not an end in themselves. What I mean is that a thought won't totally help you. It's what you do with that thought. Praise the Lord. After it comes into your mind, do you receive it? Do you reject it? Do you act upon it? Or do you respond to it appropriately? Oh, praise the Lord. Do you just get an idea and run with it without developing it and considering the ramifications? Some people are always thinking about things. Through the years, I've people come up with all kinds of dreams. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to do the other. And 10 years later, they're in the same place they were. And I say to myself, I wonder what happened to that pipe dream they had. Somewhere along the line, they let it fall to the ground. Some people always thinking about things, but they never initiate any action to go along with the thought. Some people are always having thoughts and ideas about certain things, but nothing is going to happen just because you have an idea. Praise the Lord. You have to do something with the idea. Who would have ever thought that in 20, 21st century, be riding around in electric cars? You know, the way your car moves, you go to the gas station, get some gas, drive it, go back and get some more gas. Now it's a battery. Praise the Lord. And instead of going to the gas station, you plug in at these battery depots and Praise the Lord. Who would have thought that space travel now is for the rich and famous and you can just go up in the sky and look back at the earth? Praise the Lord. Who would have thought that? It all started with someone who had an idea. And I guarantee you there were people who told them, man, you crazy. An electric car ain't going to never happen. Praise the Lord. But it starts with a thought. You got to do something with your thoughts. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus Christ. Lord, I need you to help me today. Uh, praise the Lord. You have to respond appropriately to the thoughts and the ideas and the images that come into your mind. Thoughts have to go from the idea stage. It has to transition into the action stage. You know? You ever hear somebody say, I'm fitting to do? I'm getting ready to do. Sooner or later, I'm going to do. But it never happens. Praise the Lord. Because what they had in their mind never made the transition into action. Praise the Lord. And that's what faith is all about. Didn't you know faith was a thought? Faith is a thought about God and what God can do and the assurance and praise the Lord, the praise God, the, the, the knowledge that Jesus Christ can do anything. It's a thought. Praise the Lord. The Holy Ghost receiving the Holy Ghost is a thought. And that's why some people struggle because they can't see themselves receiving the Holy Ghost. They see themselves calling his name. They see themselves saying hallelujah. Hallelujah. But it's got to go beyond that into receiving 
the Holy Ghost, which is a thought. Oh, praise the Lord. You got to act upon what you've been thinking about. After you have a thought about a situation, you have to make up your mind. Praise the Lord and hold on to it. You can't just say, I need a job. Praise the Lord. Nothing is going to happen until you go look for a job. Praise the Lord. You can't keep saying, I need to go to the doctor because that's not going to bring you a remedy. You have to go to the doctor. You can't say, I know I need to pray, but it's not going to bring a solution to your situation till you get on your knees and talk to the Lord. Praise the Lord. You must have faith because a faith affects your thoughts. When you want something from the Lord, you have to ask him for it. And the Lord said, don't ask me for it. If you don't believe, I'm going to give it to you. Because if you come to me with doubt, I'm going to act just like I didn't hear you. But if you come to me with faith, praise the Lord. I'm going to do everything in my power to bring it to pass. Well, oh, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus Christ. James 1 and 6 to 8 said that let a man ask in faith, not wavering. Uh, because he that wavers is like the wave of the sea. Praise the Lord. Today, it's at the shore. The next day is out in the ocean. Praise the Lord. Today, I'm a conquer the world. Tomorrow, I'm in a valley and I can't get out. Praise the Lord. He said, let not this man think he can receive anything from the Lord. Because a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Although the thoughts that you have are your own creation, there are other influences, other forces that help you think the way you do. Uh, these influences present to you information for process. So, and you have to determine whether or not you're going to accept their opinion, whether you're going to accept their advice. So, what you have to keep in mind, there are some positive influences. So, and then there are some negative influences. So, negative individuals who themselves are trapped in their minds. Their thoughts are ensnared with negativity all the time. Praise the Lord. Even when the conversation starts off positively, by the time it ends up, it's negative, negative, negative. And you can't let someone influence you negatively. Praise the Lord. Attach yourself to somebody that's going somewhere. Yep. Attach yourself with somebody who already has a proven experience. Yep. How can a homeless man give me advice on how to buy a home? Yep. Praise the Lord. He has a shopping card. And he doesn't know the market, but yet I'm listening to him. And in the church, there are people. Yep. Honey, if I were you, I would do this. And honey, if I were you, I wouldn't do that. If you want some good advice, go to the wonderful counselor whose name is Jesus. He will lead you and guide you into all truth. Listen to Matthew chapter 7 and verse 17. Every tree that brings forth good fruit, praise the Lord. But a corrupt tree can't bring forth good fruit. It only brings forth evil fruit. A good tree can't bring forth evil fruit. And a corrupt tree can't bring forth good fruit. Uh, praise the Lord. You will know a person by their positivity or their negativity. Praise the Lord. The fruit is what happens with the thoughts. The thoughts are the seed. Yep. Praise the Lord. But the fruits are the manifestation of the thoughts. Yep. Oh, praise the Lord. Yep. A spiritually minded person is going to give you positivity. Yep. They're going to give you uplifting words. Yep. They're going to give you words that build you up and edify you. Yep. 
But a carnal person is always speaking negative, destructive, and hurtful things. So the scripture says that if you're in Christ Jesus, you're a new creature. Uh, praise the Lord. A new creature has new thoughts. So all things are passed away and behold, all things become new. So you got to recondition the way you think. Praise the Lord. So because how you think is going to definitely change your life. So if you expose your mind to negative stuff, uh, you're going to come up, praise the Lord, with negative results. So, but if you expose your mind to positive things, so, you're going to come up with positive results. So, and I want you to know that misery loves company. So, negative folk hang together, you know. Yep. They see eye to eye on just about everything. Yep. But positive people hang together. Yep. Because they support one another in their mission to succeed. Yep. I don't know about you, but I didn't receive the Holy Ghost to be miserable. Yep. I had enough misery in my life before I met Jesus Christ. So, well, thank you, Jesus. So, I was miserable once. So, praise the Lord. I was sad once. So, I was bound once. So, thank you, Jesus Christ. So, but when I met Jesus, so, he liberated my soul. So, not only did he liberate my soul, so, but he liberated my mind. So, oh, yes, he did. I won't let anybody yep, make me a clone of themselves. Yep. No, I'm an individual. Yep. I got my own way of thinking. Yep. Praise the Lord. Now I got joy. Yep. Now I have peace. Yep. And I won't let nobody yep, steal my joy. Because yep. the joy I have, yep, the world didn't give it to me. Yep. And the world can't take it away. Yep. The Lord gave you the ability to think. Uh, he gave you the ability. Yep. So your thoughts would change your life. Yep. When you read the book of Genesis yep. and chapter 11, yep. it is the accounts of Nimrod yep. and the souls that were on the earth. Yep. They had a thought. Yep. Let's build a city. Yep. Let's build a tower yep. that go up to heaven. Now, where do you think that came from? Yep. It started with an idea. Yep. Oh, praise the Lord. Yep. They got together yep. and build a tower yep. and God was so impressed yep, with the thoughts they had. Yep, that the word said yep, he came down yep, to look at the building project yep, and when he saw it yep, he was amazed yep, he said from now on yep, there is nothing yep, that can stop them yep, from doing whatever yep, they imagine to do yep, that same power Yep. That same authority yep, is in your life yep, through the Holy Ghost. Yep. Then you hear the word. Yep. Now unto him yep, that is able yep, to do exceedingly, yep, abundantly, yep, above whatever yep, we can ask a thing. Yep. Yes, sir. Yep. I'm not going to accept. Yep. The condition I'm in, yep. I'm getting out of here. Yep. I'm not gonna be sad. Yep. I'm not gonna be sick. Yep. I'm not gonna be broke. 
I'm not going to be frustrated because the Lord is on my side and he will bring me out. The word said he's a savior. He going to rescue me. He's a way maker. He going to open an avenue. He's a healer. He going to touch my body. He's a mind regulator. He's a heart fixer. He's a finance. Oh, yes, he is. The sky is the limit. Did you hear me? Don't just rest on. Go in the church. Make your impression in this world. Don't leave it the way you found it. Carve out your niche. Carve out your pathway and pursue. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. When the Lord came down and looked at what man was doing, he said, nothing will restrain them. Nothing will limit them. Whatever thoughts they have, they're going to be able to accomplish. Oh, hallelujah. Don't spend your time daydreaming. Said, I'm just waiting for the Lord to come. He's going to come whether you do anything with your time or not. But find yourself trying to change something in this life. <laughs> Can't we do something to help somebody else? Isn't there somebody I can help along my way? Isn't there a situation I can aid and assist to bring a little joy in someone's life? Praise the Lord. But where are your thoughts? Where are your thoughts? What are you thinking about? Praise God. When you can change your thoughts to positive thinking, the Lord will do anything to you. I want to tell you why I'm the way I am. The late great Apostle William L. Bonner, praise the Lord. When I went to the W.L. Bonner College, he shared with us thoughts he had as a young boy. Father was a sharecropper. He said, they had meat once in a while, but most they had beans and vegetables. And he said, he told the Lord, I'm tired of eating vegetables, beans all the time. Praise the Lord. He said, the Lord showed him how to go down to the creek. He said, he took a torch, dipped it in tar, lit it. Went down there at night, waded into the creek, and the fish saw the light. He said every time a fish came to the surface, he'd hit it. Praise the Lord. He said now the family's diet changed from beans and vegetables to fish. Now where did those thoughts come from? The Lord gave it to him. He said it was eating fish, 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 fish. He said then he said he wants something else other than fish. He said the Lord showed him how to snare rabbits. He said now the family's diet changed again to rabbit. You know, the Lord give you thoughts. Sometimes you just let them fall to the ground. Don't even think about them. And you can see how, even as a young man, the Lord dealt with him to the point he's past, he was pastoring five churches in different states. Went to Africa and built a school, two schools and a, a church. Praise the Lord. Now, when God gives you a thought, you have to respond to it. 
Praise the Lord. I told people, I don't care what anybody else does. I'm not competing with anybody but Vaughn D. McCray Sr. And ain't nobody going to stop me from doing it. I asked the Lord, Lord, show me how. The skills I have as a builder, I never went to any kind of technical school. Before I start the job, Lord, show me how this is supposed to work. And the Lord show me. Praise the Lord. Oh, I'm going to leave my footprint in this world. I am. Yes, sir, I'm going to leave it at refuge. I'm going to leave it in my family. I'm going to leave it among my colleagues. Because the Lord don't want you to be limited. Don't want you to have boundaries. Have you closed in? You are to expand. Praise the Lord. Didn't you hear J. Bass say, Lord, enlarge my territory. Enlarge everything that pertained to me. Praise the Lord. That's what the Lord wants from us. Let me close out with the text. This woman in this text, sick, has a situation in her body that she's hemorrhaging blood. She's got a little money. Praise the Lord. She goes to the specialist. He gives her a prescription and takes her money naturally. Praise the Lord. That didn't work. She went to another one. That didn't work. Another doctor. That didn't work. For 12 years, she's going to the doctor after doctor after doctor. Until she ran out of money. You know, doctors ain't going to treat you for free. And the scripture said instead of her getting better, she only got worse. Now it's 12 years she's been struggling with this illness in her body. All of her means are gone. And she's still in a worse situation than she was when she started. But you know, God knows how to make an intervention in your life. Praise the Lord. Jesus was headed to minister to somebody else. But when this woman heard the crowd and wanted to know what's going on, they said, it's Jesus of Nazareth. The woman said, who? Jesus of Nazareth. She said, I got to get to him. I got to get to him. He's my solution. He's my answer. He's the one that can turn my life around. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, sir. But the crowd is there. People are all around him. That sister said, I come too far to go home the same way I came. And if you notice, she has a thought. She said to herself, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be made whole. Praise the Lord. Sometimes you got to talk to yourself. Hang up the phone. Get on your knees. Talk to Jesus. Let him give you an answer. Oh, that will solve the problems in your life. It said she came behind in the press and reached out and touched his clothes. Oh, and immediately the blood stopped flowing. And the thing I like about it, Jesus know when you're touching him. Yes, sir. You can get on your knees, give up that old carnal prayer if you want to and think, oh, I touch heaven. Oh, Jesus, know when you touch him. Jesus said, who touched me? And they say, well, Lord, all these people around you, everybody touch you. He said, uh-uh. That was a virtue touch. That was a healing touch. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. That's what you need, a healing touch. A touch that will transform your life. Don't accept the condition of your life. Don't accept the situation that you're in now. If you won't change, come to Jesus. If you won't change, turn your thoughts around. 
Esther, Lord, help me, Jesus. Help me think the way you want me to think. And the Lord will do just that. Let's put our hands together and give God a praise. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, sir. Thoughts are a powerful force. You can think your way in and think your way out. You know, every saint should want to be a success. And success does not mean money, material things. Success is that you are operating at your potential in Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Because you can't operate no further than what God gave you the ability to operate in. But when you can operate at that level, you're a success. Now, people may look at you and think, well, you don't have this, you don't have that. It has nothing to do with it. I know if I tie with a soul, they come through with the Holy Ghost. I think that's success. I know when people give me a prayer request and I pray and the Lord answer the prayer, that's a success. So don't associate success with material goods. Praise the Lord. Material goods are good to have because then you have more to give. Thank you, Jesus. Every believer, think about what you've been thinking about. You can't plant your head in front of a TV all day and expect to come up with this world revolutionary idea. But cut the television off and pray. Praise the Lord. <laughs> all right. Bless you now in the name of Jesus. To those of you that are watching through Facebook, I want you to know we're praying for you. That the Lord will minister in the midst of your life. For Jesus Christ is everywhere. He's right where you are right now. You might be able to feel him if you just give him a praise. He will bless you and keep you and strengthen you. In the name of Jesus Christ. At this time, call to the altar. I want everyone to stand that can. Praise the Lord. All of you stand that can. In Jesus name. I refuse to accept this condition. Now only you know what your condition is.